All right, guys, so the next RV we're going to be taking out is going to be towed by this 2020 King Ranch F350 with the Power Stroke, 8-foot bed, and we're going to be towing this Grand Design Reflection fifth wheel. Let's take a look at the numbers on this one. So this has a gross vehicle weight rating of 13,995 pounds. Once we get inside, I'll tell you specifically what it's weighted up to because they do add weight to it. In the bed of this truck, they are using a, looks like a Reese hitch. It's definitely a drop-in hitch. Can't tell specifically because it doesn't have a brand on it. Looks like we have a good amount of bed height clearance here too. So that is one of the huge perks of these new 2020 Super Duties is the fact that they've dropped the truck down about an inch and a half. So your overhang here is much easier to accomplish, getting that gap you need here, because traditionally it would have been right about here and you would have lost about an inch and a half of clearance. So that is really cool. If you didn't lose the clearance, then the fifth wheel would be tilting back quite a bit. So we are gonna hit the road in this truck to see how it tows. And I'll be a passenger in this one, but I'll still be able to give you a good idea of just how it tows and we'll get feedback from the driver. And what's crazy is this is a travel trailer we just towed and it is about the same length as this fifth wheel. That is huge. This is a huge, huge torque toy hauler. And if you want to look at what model number of fifth wheel we're towing, this is the Reflection 311 BHS. It is a rear bunkhouse unit from Grand Design. All right, guys, we're going to hit the road. All right, so one number I forgot to gather payload capacity on this F350 single rear wheel long bed truck, 4,189 pounds. Yeah, 4,189 pounds. That is nuts. That is a lot of payload capacity for a one ton single rear wheel truck. More than enough to support the pin weight of this reflection. All right, so we are taking off in the F350 single rear wheel, eight foot bed truck, hauling this Grand Design Reflection 311 BHS fifth wheel. We got the whole crew with us this time. Got, all the, got the whole Super Duty crew back here. We've been tagging along for most of this ride and getting lost together, getting found together. It's just been a fun trip. So what experience do you have towing a fifth wheel? Not a whole lot, but lots of experience towing a bumper pull. Okay. Um, so this is a fun, this is going to be a fun trip. Let's put it that way. It'll be a little bit different than what you're used to. It will not have any sway. Yeah, I'm excited about that. Yep, so wind doesn't really affect a fifth wheel being towed like it does a travel trailer or a bumper pole. It's amazing when it takes off, it's just seamless. It's nice. Yeah, they've definitely nailed down the, the torque curve on this. You, you get a lot of that power right off the bat. At some point, you're going to have to be worried about ripping your fifth wheel hitch off because you accelerate too fast. <laughs> it's impressive though, 55 miles an hour, you're in seventh gear, cruising along. Mm -hmm. Overall, though, I've been very impressed with, with this truck, and I know I've brought up other trucks and talked about how I've been impressed with them, but the statement I like to reiterate and just repeat as much as possible is, it is the best time on earth to be a new truck buyer, because you can't go wrong. I mean, hopping in this truck, just the power it has, the feeling, the exhaust brake, how that worked when we were coming down the hill with the travel trailer, it really works well to give a driver more confidence because 10 years ago hauling this much weight with the truck you might be white knuckling it on some of these routes you might be wondering if your brakes are heating up too much and the technology that they're now putting in these trucks to just make it safer make you feel more comfortable and make you not have that butt pucker effect when you get to your campground just makes the enjoyability of going rving going camping that much better but you can see one of these other trucks coming back Looks like a dually hauling a reflection. And there's the heavy tow. What is the heavy one weighted up to? 30,000 pound trailer. So we're at 30,000 pounds on a gooseneck? Yep. So we'll take that one out. We don't have any of these trucks really maxed out. And that's actually a good thing. So I, I see a lot of these reviews that will take a truck that has a 37,000 pound or 35,000 pound maximum towing capacity and they'll max it out when I don't believe that that's the route that anybody towing should ever go. You should never really max your vehicle out. In my opinion, you should have overkill. 
your truck should be able to tow significantly more weight than what you put behind it because that's just more confidence inspiring. It's less likely you're going to have to deal with something that could impact a truck at full load. So far, how's it feel? Great. It's really smooth. I like even, uh, I don't know, that the long bed is uh, it's great. It makes it very confident when you're going down the road. I like the calibration of the power steering too. It's got a nice on center feel. It does, and that's one thing I haven't talked about much, but the new steering system in this truck has definitely improved the overall feel. It feels firm when it needs to feel firm, but then it feels a little bit looser when you want it to feel a little looser. And it's definitely a good evolution from the previous model. Now, I would be interested, and I don't know if either of you gentlemen can answer, fundamentally, what are the differences between the steering system on this truck and the steering system with the adaptive steering on the previous generation? So this does have adaptive steering on it. It also has uh, what's called electronically assisted hydraulic. So the adaptive changes the ratio between the steering wheel and the steering shaft, column shaft uh, for like parking lot maneuvers and so on, uh, so that you can have to turn the wheel as many times. Now the electric uh, electrically like assisted hydraulic actually uh, it varies the boost of the system. So it's uh, it allows you to have a lot less uh, hydraulic boost on the highway. Well, you really don't need it here and have adequate and, and good boost in the parking lot. Before that, it's always been a trade-off between those two of, you know, over-boosting for low speed uh, and to keep the efforts down and over-boosting on the highway and then you have too, too little effort. And the, uh, the on-center feel gets really reduced when that happens. That's why you made the comment the on-center feels good. There's very little boost required when you're moving. If you remember the old manual steering days, uh, you know, as long as the vehicle was moving, you could turn the wheel, but the minute you stopped the vehicle, uh, the steering wheel became very difficult. Mm -hmm. So the same thing happens here. So we can reduce the boost or the assist of the power steering uh, while the vehicle's moving. There's other benefits too, and that steering and chassis guys can roll through other those are, but that's the basic gist of oh. it. Is, that's what how it that's how it works. Okay, so do we have any idea what the fifth wheel behind us is loaded up to from a gross vehicle weight perspective? So this one is at, this is the King Ranch. So we're at uh, this is the R, fifth wheel RV. It's a 12,000 pound weight of, on the trailer. Okay, so we got 12,000 pounds loaded up behind us. What is the uh, fifth wheel capacity of this? So the max fifth wheel capacity of this is 22,100. Okay, and conventional? Uh, conventional is 20,000 20, even, and gooseneck is 22,200. Okay, so yeah, this is a very, very capable truck. Now here's a question. 10 years ago, a truck in this configuration, what do you think the maximum fifth wheel would be? about 18 uh the maximum gross combined was probably less than 20 yeah so you're talking about a fifth wheel probably closer to 12,000 pounds to give or take uh, yep. around there yep yep so numbers have skyrocketed as these trucks are becoming more of an engineered product and i i know they've always been engineered but from the perspective of what was the previous generation capable of and what were we able to do to improve the current generation that a lot of that engineering goes towards its towing capability and goes towards your ability to safely manage a trailer that's relatively heavy. Okay, now we're going downhill and he'll have an opportunity to check how the diesel exhaust brake works. It's in automatic mode. It's in auto, so basically, correct me if I'm wrong guys, but you basically find the speed you're looking for and kind of give the brake a quick tap. You don't have to, you, whatever the last speed is, the, the last pedal you touch, either gas or brake, is what the set speed becomes. It's kind of a one-way speed control. So if so, I let off, okay. So it'll, right now, since you let off the brake at about 30 miles an hour, it's going to try to hold you at 30. Okay. If you were accelerating and let off at 30 miles an hour, it also holds you at 30. This is just so you guys can see. Wow that we are on a relatively steep incline right now and holding at 30 miles an hour with 12,000 pounds worth of fifth wheel behind us. It is really spectacular to see the evolution of the diesel exhaust brake on these trucks. I mean, it, it is something special. Now, a question I have is, what is the difference between my 2017 diesel exhaust brake and this 2020 diesel exhaust brake? Is there any significant difference in it? None. That is awesome. The control system is the same. The turbocharger is upgraded for the uh, fuel economy and performance, but the braking features within are retained. Absolutely. So that is that's great news. Same capability. 
And so the 2017 still has a ton of capability. This is just basically an enhancement to that. Third generation power stroke engine, 475 horsepower, 1,050 pound-feet of torque, makes hauling something like this more effortless. But at the same time, this is what I advise people to think about. It's not that you need to buy a bigger fifth wheel or a bigger trailer because you have a truck that can pull more. The fact is that if you can still pull the same trailer that you're currently pulling with whatever truck you have and you have the power now, then you're giving yourself that overkill that gives you a safety margin. This truck is designed to pull and stop that type of weight. So giving you that extra safety margin whenever you're towing, whatever you currently have, is going to inspire confidence while you're driving. I mean... When you're on a road like this, They're where drop off on the side. one side has a couple hundred foot drop off and the other side is just a sheer wall, you want as much towing confidence as possible. And that is probably the single most important factor when it comes to getting into RVing, picking what type of trailer you want, picking what type of truck you want. You want to make sure that you get to where you're going, especially if it's supposed to be a vacation and you're not sweating bullets because of the experience getting there. One thing I'd also like to mention is the addition of the 10-speed transmission increases the capacity of the engine brake to allow you to find the right RPM to hold the most load under uh, all circumstances. Uh, you have four more gears allows you to find that sweet spot just that much better. Okay, and that's important. You know, and that's that's one of the benefits of a 10-speed in general is the fact that you know that it's going to find the right gear for the right speed for the right situation. And when you're going downhill, that situation is slowing down, stopping avoiding brake fade, avoiding things that can cause potential, potentially dangerous situations. And right now, how do you feel? I mean, give me your honest feedback. How do you feel about towing this trailer down this hill that's at a relatively steep climb? I mean, I'm at 100% confidence right now. It's the, the thing that amazes me is when you let off and it holds that speed. Um, I mean, that's phenomenal. You're not even worried about which pedal you're touching or anything right now. Um, it's very, very confident. Very cool. And this guy, this, my friends, is Casey. He is all about off-roading. What do you do? What do you generally report on? Oh, UTVs, ATVs, anything that goes in the dirt, basically, stuff. And usually we like taking trucks in the dirt, too, because you got to get out there first. You live here in, in Arizona, so this is your Arizona. this is like your hometown. This is our wheelhouse, man. I love this place. So There's a lot of open land out here, so it makes towing things around and enjoying the great outdoors uh, that much easier. Absolutely, guys. And he might start a YouTube channel. So if he does, I'll let you guys know because he's going to have a lot of content that I don't even talk about because I don't have a lot of this stuff. This thing I'm driving on right now, I had to look it up in a dictionary to see what we're on and I found out it's called a hill. <laughs> so what we were discussing is once we turned off the exhaust brake and took it out of tow haul, how the truck essentially just wants to pick up speed and go on its own without any type of throttle simply because there's nothing preventing the truck from speeding up. Building up some speed there. 65 miles an hour, cruising around along. Yep. Yeah, there's definitely nothing to get back. It's, it's, uh, it's just free flowing. It's about to cycle the engine brake on. So, okay, then maybe toggle down a couple of gears. Hit the minus button. Maybe then, yep, hit it more, a few more times. You'll feel the engine speed up. Yep. And then again. There Don't worry, it won't let you break the engine. Yeah, no, it's okay. Yeah, it won't go over 4,000 RPM. Okay. Oh, that's cool. And you can do it probably that's one more time. Down and down down here. Here. Okay. If it goes over 4,000, that means I have to talk to Larry. <laughs> <laughs> well, even if you if you forget or something and you're on the road and then all of a sudden you need to slow down, I mean, that's a pretty easy process. All right, guys. Well, I sure hope you enjoyed this video. This is the second truck we've used to tow. I think we're going to hop into another one that is hitched up to a much heavier load. We'll take that one up and back down, and we'll be given a much better example of how the engine exhaust brake works under a heavy, heavy load. And this is going to be a lot for those hot shot drivers, the folks that are pulling around goosenecks, loading tractors on the back, and they want to see if it's an improvement over what they currently have, whatever they have. If you have an older truck that's you know, eight, 10 years old, your diesel exhaust brake is probably okay, but it doesn't really hold a candle to some of these new ones. Anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you haven't had a chance, please take a moment, subscribe to my channel, give me a thumbs up. We'll talk to you again very soon.